We've got the Land Rover Defender back. This time, the V8. Hold on, Zach. Oh, yeah, listen, listen to this. Oh, <laughs> oh no, that V8 sounds good. All right, so yes, we've driven two Defenders already. Mm -hmm. Both of them had the inline six cylinder. Now we get the V8. I like this one. So what's under the hood of this thing? A supercharged five liter V8 with an eight speed automatic transmission. 518 horsepower and 461 pound feet of torque. Standard all wheel drive. Do you know who used to drive a Defender, Andrea? Who? Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. She used to drive a uh, Defender manual transmission, the old school one. So her. if it's good enough for Lizzie, it's, it's good, good enough, enough for us. us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you get with this thing? What are the key standard features? The Defender comes with an 11.4 inch touchscreen, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a wireless charger, 3D surround camera, a 14 speaker Meridian audio system, head up display, Windsor leather, 14-way power front seats, heated and ventilated front seats, driver's seat memory, a heated steering wheel, and a panoramic sunroof. You want terrain settings? You buy a Land Rover. They have everything covered, mm -hmm. including what, Andrea? You gotta put it in S for subscribe, and if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop, and then you can watch them. And we do this, the Cup of Car review, twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you like and subscribe, but also follow on Instagram to see what's going on behind the scenes. It's Motormouth underscore Andrea. For me, it's Motormouth underscore Auto, and the links are below the like button. This video is brought to you by CarCost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. So at the same time, uh -huh. we have the all new Range Rover Sport, and they said, would you like a Defender V8? We Come said, on. well, hell yeah, who wouldn't want half a million dollars worth of Land Rover in front of the house? <laughs> All right, so uh, how do you like this one saying compared to the Range Rover? Well, the Range Rover Sport is a little bit more refined. It has a smoother ride, a little bit more floating, yet still dynamic for a Range Rover. This one has a more truck-like feel. The steering is light, so maneuverability is great. But considering this comes with air suspension, you still feel a bit of those bumps in the road. See, now we were driving the Range Rover yesterday and Andrea, yeah. I know, and if you're a long time viewer, you know she likes that trucky, bouncy kind of thing. I would think this is more your jam and the Range Rover Sport's more my jam. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I just love this commanding seating position. I love the ruggedness of it, whether it's the exterior or interior, but it still offers a luxury feel. And you know what I get with the Range Rover, Andrea? What do you get? I get a power lift gate. You've yeah. got to you've got to tackle the big tire and swing up okay door in the back. That. Now I'm just you, fine with you that. You would get tired of that in about five minutes on a rainy day coming out of the grocery store. I'll just store. take your Range Rover then on those days. Not available. <laughs> Not available that day. I'm using it. So this lightweight chassis has been engineered and tested Land Rover says this is the most capable Defender ever. And it has been tested around the world on over 73,000 trails. And get this, across 2.4 million miles. Well, they know what the hell they're doing for the off-road capabilities yeah. of their products. I mean, uh, you're really going to be hard-pressed to find a vehicle that can do what one of these can do. 99.37% yeah. of people are never going to utilize that. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a poser vehicle. I'm okay, Andrea. I'm feeling happy today. Yeah. Are you looking at me driving in this? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wait a second. Let me just roll down the window. Uh -oh. How do you like the new... De this is the... This is the V8. That's right. 500 That's right. plus horsepower. Listen to this guy. Listen to this guy. You know, every time we get a Defender, I see more and more on the road. This is a popular choice in Vancouver. They are everywhere. And boy, they're all clean. Hit it, hit it, hit so it. So there is no... Oh man, it sounds so good. God, I love that. Watch the cops sit up here. You gotta be careful. Yeah, they do. Yeah. This is a spot where they Thanks like. Thanks for the reminder, Zach. All right, so on the outside of this thing, as Andrew mentioned, comes with air suspension. So what you're gonna get is the ability to do water fording and off-road duties, yeah. raise it up. But even if you don't do any of that, if you're going in deep snow, you're going to a cabin or a yeah. chalet, you're gonna be able to get where you need to go, no problemo. Yeah, this gets 8.5 inches to 11.5 inches of ground clearance. It could weighed through 35.4 inch 
inches of water. This Defender has a real presence on the road. Our test model has black exterior accents, quad exhaust pipes, body colored door handles. You got a full size spare tire. Um, and we're riding on 22 inch wheels. Does it come with a credit card for the gas? No, it hey, doesn't. you know what? We were just in Texas last mm -hmm. week driving the GX, not driving, looking at the okay. all new Lexus GX. And Andrea, what do I say about Land Rover products? They're the most copied when it comes to design. Yeah. You look at that new Lexus GX, boy, it looks like this with a different grill on it, that yeah. boxy shape. This brand is a real leader when it comes to exterior design. Yeah, and I think Lexus needed to do that with the GX to compete with models like this and oh. the Range Rover. You know what they say about Land Rovers? Um, a Land Rover will get you into the back country. Uh, a Toyota or a Lexus will get you back. Not surprising, right? <laughs> so by the way, our hot topic is, uh, what do you think it's about, Andrea? The one thing people want to know about this, maybe mm. maybe reliability? Maybe. Yeah, we'll get into that. That is the most asked question. I think that people really love Land Rover uh, models, whether you're getting a Discovery or you're moving up into a Range Rover or this Defender. This comes standard with LED headlamps, fog lamps, and you get some V8 badging on this. The carrying load allows for 370 pounds and the static load is 661 pounds. So if you wanna put a tent up here, no problem at all. So I'm a bit conflicted about the inside, Andrea, because mm -hmm. I think it looks cool, but ergonomically, it's not perfect. I think it would probably be better if the steering wheel was over here in the UK, the volume knob is closer to the passenger, and then the shifter is in the way of the head unit, but I do like all the buttons. I'm okay with it. I think the shifter looks good. The 11.4 inch touch screen is easy to access. It's actually intuitive to use. I like that they haven't put everything in the screen. There's lots of buttons, there's knobs, there's the volume knob and climate control. I did have issues with this screen. I went to pair my phone and connect wireless Android Auto. The screen froze on me, unfortunately. Eventually, I did it got get there. it working yeah. and I had this like hallelujah moment. And now that I'm connected to wireless Android Auto, it's been working really well. It's also a brand, brand, brand. We're the first ones to drive yeah. this. So um, I don't know, we're not making any excuses for it. No. Uh, the Defender logo that's in the dash pad here is actually metal. That's yep. a metal piece that runs across there. I like the tray. There's so many cubbies and handles. This is really designed to use it for off-road safari kind of stuff. Like we said, most people won't, but at least it looks the part. I like that Land Rover went with a rugged interior, but it still has some upscale materials like this Windsor leather. And when we got into the new Lexus GX, I found that the interior had some tundra elements to it. And when I spoke to the head of Lexus, I said to him, was that all done on purpose? And he said, yeah, we tried to give it a more rugged look. So it's almost like they're really trying to compete with this Defender. Oh yeah, listen, I'm telling you, this is the most copy brand when it comes yeah. to design on the outside for sure and you see that on the inside this 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 is really well thought out for mm -hmm. the most part and comfortable yeah the seating position if you've never driven in a Land Rover or a Range Rover um, you need to go to like an auto show or something maybe just go to the dealer and jump in it and you'll see uh, how high you sit up and how yeah. comfortable the seats are so here's me getting in the back seat this is a bit of a step up but when you're inside the seats are really comfortable you get a lot of leg room and you get a lot of headroom basketball player in your life this would be a good choice the seats are at a nice pitch however they don't recline it's a fixed setting comparing the Defender to competitors like the Ford Bronco and Jeep Grand Cherokee it offers less front row leg room at 39.1 inches rear leg room at 38.4 inches is about the same as the Jeep but three inches more than the Bronco you have a swing out tailgate. It doesn't open to the curbside, it opens to the roadside. Might be okay in the UK, but in North America, that's not great, especially if you have a dog jumping out onto the road. The cargo space is big though. Cargo space behind the second row at 34 cubic feet is less than both of these competitors. And overall cargo at 78.8 cubic feet is less than the Bronco, but more than the Grand Cherokee. So questions coming up, but also a comment mm -hmm. from someone who owns one of these. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. 
your questions from Instagram. So how does this compare to the Mercedes-Benz G-Class in your opinion? I know price-wise this is less than the G-Class, but are people who are looking at one or the other, are they comparing both? I think they do. Mm -hmm, I think so too. Uh, but you, you know what, Andrea? People, you could say, oh, well, one's better off-road and climbing up mountains. No, it's status. Mm -hmm. And the G-Wagon has more status than this. And I think we can both agree that most people won't be taking these vehicles no. off-road. There no. are some that will, mm -hmm. or they might buy a used one. Uh, but definitely a status symbol for the G-Wagon. You see celebrities driving them. We see a ton in Vancouver. We know what they cost, interestingly, enough in Vancouver they buy the AMG model and that's a fortune. Do you know the biggest AMG market in the world? Vancouver. Crazy eh? Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is one is a body on frame truck so the G-Wagon is still built on a ladder frame. Yeah. It has the front center and rear locking differentials arguably the more tank-like vehicle. It really is a military truck yeah. that was made popular for civilians, uh, I guess you could say the Defender was too, but not this latest version. The old body on frame ones were. Yeah, and they're different. You know, when you close the door of a G-Wagon, it just sounds amazing. Sounds... And the clicking of the locks. I mean, it does some pretty special things that make it a G-Wagon. This is great well, too. This is so way, capable, but the G-Wagon is also smaller than that. It is smaller. G-Wagon yeah. is incoming, Andrea. We have it in a few weeks. Oh my gosh, I always love driving that, always. This vehicle looks huge. Interior looks nice and roomy, but pricey. Gas mileage is awful. Mm -hmm. How does it feel on the highway? Feels good on the highway. Well, Feels not... like a truck though, doesn't it? Well, the thing truck is they, they, they did exactly the opposite of Mercedes-Benz. They brought out an NG wagon, which is a traditional body on frame design. This vehicle, the Defender, got, went away from that, went to a unibody design. So yeah. it's sharing the same underpinnings as the Discovery and the Range Rovers. And so you're gonna have a better on-road experience with a unibody car. Yes, and we've got the Range Rover Sport this week as well. And it definitely has a more refined drive, a little bit floatier than this. I like this truck like feel this is fast you are never going to feel a lack of power with this v8 on the highway i think it is fantastic but you're right the fuel economy numbers are not good is it comfortable you bet it is there's going to be a smaller percentage of people that just want the old school v8 yeah i would kind of be one of them that i like that I like it. Now, I wonder, this is the 5 liter V8, and the new Range Rover Sport has the 4.4 liter V8 from BMW. I wonder if eventually this is going to get the same. I, I would think I so. I would think so, yeah. And it's got the mild hybrid system. So this next one is not a question, but we had to use it. It's a comment because our follower on Instagram owns a Defender. So here we go. Before I lease my Defender, I went out and asked their service department people, should I lease or buy it? Their oh, little boy. <laughs> lease, right? Their response, never buy anything from JLR. You're going to keep longer than the warranty of three mm. years. Wow. wow. That's coming from their service department. Okay, keep going. That said, best vehicle I've ever owned. Love it. However, it goes through a gallon of coolant every six months with no leak found. Again, service tech said that that was totally normal for a JLR vehicle. Where would a, a liter or a gallon? A he said a gallon goes wow. through a gallon where of would, coolant every six months. So where would a gallon of coolant go? I hope it's not going into the combustion system or to the crankcase. So yeah. that's it's maybe it has something to do with the turbo. I don't know. But there so you go. I think this person is a perfect example of knowing full well going into it might have problems with the Defender, but absolutely loves this vehicle and is willing to put up with it. And that's going to be also part of our next segment, which is. The hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? How would you address JLR's history of reliability or the belief that they are unreliable? I've always bought cars that were not the overly popular choice because of perceived unreliability and never had less than 300 kilometers on them before trading up. Do you feel the loudest voices screaming unreliable are what gets heard? 
Well, Andrew, I remember being on web forums for cars that we owned and yeah. all the people complaining about the issues with their car. And then I came to the realization that the only people that post are the ones that are complaining about their car. Nobody ever puts a post and says, I love my car, it's driving great, see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. That's not the way it works. But there are plenty of people who own these vehicles that absolutely love them. And then there's other peoples that deal with all kinds of issues. Yeah, but you know what? The stats show the 2023 JD Power Dependability Study has got Land Rover in last spot. So there is some truth to it. I well, wish... there's a lot of truth to it. Yeah. <laughs> I I mean, look at the comment from our viewer who owns one. I mean, a gallon of coolant every six months? Come on, but he loves it. And I think that's the key, is that people are willing to put up with more. They want it, oh, they Andrea, want the vehicle. I swear it's to pain. you, I, I swear to you, I yes. swear to you. It just popped up and it said, add a liter of engine oil. Oh right now. my god! But this is brand new, but still, a liter of engine oil. That is not good. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. The timing of that is crazy. Okay, here. Let's just do it right here. Wow, that is phone. nuts. Take that's... a pick. Take a pick. Add one liter of engine oil. Well, it could just be run-of-the-mill break-in. could be the run-of-the-mill break-in stuff. I yeah. don't know. But... Uh, I just think it's just so strange that we just had that whole comment and then that pops up. And here's the thing, if I own this, say this was our vehicle, first off, I had some issues with the infotainment system. So in my mind, I was already saying, oh boy, I gotta go to the service department. That's just gonna be a pain, especially if you only have one vehicle. And now this. I don't think anybody who has one of these just has this. Probably not. All right, so uh, that's the update. <laughs> to the minute. All right, let's get into the towing capacity, the horrible fuel economy, and more in our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The Defender V8 is just over 133,000 in Canada and 111 and a half thousand dollars in the US. Put your seatbelt on. Here's the fuel economy. 16.4 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 12.7 on the highway. That's 14 miles per gallon city, 18 miles per gallon highway. The Defender can tow 7,716 pounds and the warranty is four years, 80,000 kilometers or 50,000 miles. So we've got an eclectic mix for your yeah. consideration. One of them you're probably thinking, how is that fit in there? Well, it is capable, that's the Grand Cherokee, yeah. to add air suspension. That's why we threw it in. For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Land Rover Discovery with a 3-liter turbocharged 6-cylinder, 355 horsepower, and a starting price just under $83,000. The Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 3.6-liter V6, 293 horsepower, and a starting price just under $55,000. The Ford Bronco 4-door with a 2.7-liter EcoBoost engine, up to 330 horsepower, and a starting price just over $51,000. The Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, the 550, uses a 4-liter turbocharged V8, 416 horsepower, and a starting price just under $175,000. So there are four off-road capable SUVs for you to consider. Lightning round. Two things we like, two things we like to see improved. Love the cool and retro vibe of the Defender. I always love driving one of these. You know what? Just reliability. If Land Rover can sort this out, wow, they have nailed it with the Defender. Do you know what I need, Andrea? I need a liter of oil. Mm -hmm. Powerful, capable, and good looking. What about the truck, Andrea? <laughs> This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.